So the two of them, the uh, chatbots that are a revolution in software, and then quantum computers, which are a revolution in hardware, when they get together, watch out. So we're talking about an extremely powerful alliance between software and hardware. The era of AI is already underway, sparking concerns among scientists who advocate for its controlled development. However, there's a new player on the scene, quantum computers. But here's where it gets intriguing. The renowned physicist Michio Kaku has recently dropped a bombshell about the fusion of AI and quantum computers. Moreover, something strange is happening. What awaits us when these forces combine? Stay tuned as we dive into the beliefs of scientists and discover the insights from Michio Kaku himself. Before we delve into what the combination of AI and quantum computers can do, let's take a moment to understand the concept of quantum computing and its origins. To help grasp the idea of quantum computing, let's imagine you're in a massive library and you're on a quest to find a specific book. In traditional computing, you'd search for the book by meticulously examining each bookshelf and book one by one until you locate the desired one. This linear approach can be time-consuming and inefficient, especially if the book you seek is buried at the far end of the library. Now, let's introduce quantum computing into the mix. In this scenario, each book in the library represents a different possibility or solution. Instead of searching linearly, a quantum computer can magically explore all the books at once. It can consider every possible path simultaneously and instantly pinpoint the exact location of the book you're looking for. Unlike traditional computers that rely on bits to store and process information, quantum computers have something way cooler called qubits. In regular computing, bits can only be in a zero or one state. They're the building blocks of digital computing, used for calculations and storing data. But qubits in quantum computers are the real superheroes. They possess a remarkable quality called superposition, which allows them to exist in multiple states all at once. They can be both zero and one simultaneously, juggling multiple possibilities effortlessly. This gives quantum computers mind-blowing computational abilities, as they can explore countless states and possibilities in parallel. And here's where things get even more mind-bending. Qubits can exhibit entanglement, a remarkable phenomenon where the state of one qubit becomes intrinsically linked to the state of another qubit, irrespective of their physical separation. This entanglement property bestows quantum computers with exponential computational capabilities, harnessing the power of interconnected qubits to solve complex problems. Now, let's talk about how these quantum computers actually work. They go through a series of complex processes involving the preparation of qubits, tweaking their states, and measuring the final results. To set things in motion, the qubits are chilled to insanely low temperatures, almost absolute zero. This chilly environment helps minimize any interference from the surrounding world, ensuring that the qubits stay stable and focused on the task at hand. During computation, the quantum computer measures the qubits to extract information. But here's the thing about quantum computers, when you measure a qubit, it collapses into a single state, and all that amazing superposition and entanglement vanish in an instant. It's like a magician revealing their trick, and the magic disappears. To make the most out of the measurements before the collapse, quantum algorithms employ some advanced techniques. These techniques extract meaningful results while the superposition and entanglement are still intact, maximizing the power of quantum computation. So, what makes quantum computers so darn impressive? Well, it's because of the ability to solve certain problems at an exponential speed compared to regular computers. While regular computers plow through information one step at a time, quantum computers can tackle enormous amounts of data all at once, thanks to their superposition and entanglement mojo. Now, the origins of quantum computing can be traced back to the 1980s and 1990s. While the concept of quantum computing was first proposed by the brilliant mathematician and physicist Alan Turing, his work predates the development of quantum computing. He envisioned a future where machines could leverage the principles of quantum mechanics for incredibly efficient computation. Turing set the wheels in motion, inspiring scientists and researchers to explore the possibilities of quantum computing further. However, his idea remained mostly theoretical for several decades due to the challenges of practical implementation. 
it faced a bunch of challenges that made it difficult to bring to life. But in the 1970s, physicist Richard Feynman started making some serious progress. That changed the game. Feynman's contributions were like a guiding light, pushing the field forward and laying the foundation for future breakthroughs. He proposed the revolutionary concept of quantum computation. Feynman envisioned a novel type of computer that could utilize the principles of quantum mechanics to solve complex problems beyond the capabilities of classical machines. His out-of-the-box thinking got people excited and kicked research into high gear, all intending to harness the power of quantum mechanics for computation. But you know what they say, real progress takes time. It wasn't until the 1990s that things started to heat up. In 1994, mathematician Peter Short dropped a bombshell with his revolutionary algorithm. It showed that quantum computers could efficiently solve these mind-boggling integer factorization problems. And that was bad news for the security of public key encryption systems because it meant classical encryption algorithms were suddenly vulnerable. But it gets even more exciting. In 1995, the folks at the IBM Almaden Research Center took Shor's algorithm from theory to reality. They implemented it using nuclear magnetic resonance NMR, techniques. It was a major milestone, even though there were still limitations when it came to scalability. But hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? Around that same time, a group of brilliant physicists Peter Shore, Andrew Steen, and Emmanuel Nill made another mind-blowing discovery. They cracked the code on quantum error correction. It was like finding the secret sauce to protect quantum information from all those pesky errors that can mess things up. This was a huge step forward in building practical and reliable quantum computers. And the hits just kept on coming. In 1999, the team at IBM blew everyone away by successfully teleporting quantum states from one spot to another. And then in 2005, mathematician Daniel Simon introduced his algorithm that kicked classical algorithms to the curb for certain problems, speeding things up like crazy. Not to be outdone, in 2009, computer scientist Lav Grover brought us his algorithm that made unstructured searches a breeze. When it comes to building quantum computers, research groups and companies have been making big strides in the experimental arena. Take, for instance, the collaboration between Google, NASA, and D-Wave systems. Together, they developed the D-Wave 2 quantum computer, which hit the market in 2013 as one of the earliest commercially available quantum computers. What made it unique was its approach called adiabatic quantum computing, using superconducting qubits to tackle optimization problems. But just as things were picking up steam, a curveball came out of nowhere. External pressures from the government forced Google and NASA to put the brakes on their quantum computer development efforts. Talk about a setback. The D-Wave 2 quantum computer was all set and ready to go, but suddenly, its future became uncertain. However, in 2016, IBM came roaring onto the scene with something called the IBM Quantum Experience. This cloud-based platform allowed folks to tinker with a smaller-scale quantum computer featuring five superconducting qubits. The idea behind this initiative was to make quantum computing accessible to everyone and encourage collaboration within the quantum community. It opened up a world of possibilities for researchers and enthusiasts worldwide to dive into quantum algorithms and conduct experiments remotely. Fast forward to 2017, and we hit a significant milestone. Physicists at Yale University cracked the code on error-corrected qubits with their groundbreaking surface code architecture. This breakthrough paved the way for fault-tolerant quantum computing, where we can protect quantum information from pesky errors and decoherence. Then, in 2019, Google dropped a bombshell. Their research team, led by the brilliant John Martinez, unveiled their 53-qubit superconducting processor called Sycamore. And guess what? Sycamore outperformed classical computers. Sycamore accomplished a task in just 200 seconds that Google estimated would require a leading-edge supercomputer of approximately 10,000 years to complete. This marked a historic moment known as the Sycamore Supremacy Experiment. It was the first time a quantum computer had done something that even the most powerful classical supercomputers couldn't handle. Although the task wasn't immediately practical, it showcased the mind-boggling potential of quantum computers to achieve computational greatness beyond what classical systems can offer.